This video is speculation. I do not claim to know precisely what is happening or has happened in this uh, specific matter. A hypothesis, which is something I'm offering in this video, is not necessarily something that someone believes. It's something that someone proposes. You can, you can propose multiple things. You can offer multiple hypotheses that even contradict each other, and that is not a problem because the, the point is not to offer something as a fact or as a belief. It is offered is to offer something uh, to uh, examine or test. Hypotheses ideally are proved or disproved, but more often they just get ranked with a bunch of other hypotheses in terms of uh, whatever the uh, current prevailing state of evidence uh, best supports. So you have, a, you have stronger hypotheses and weaker hypotheses. So please don't don't take what I describe in this video as some as fact or as, as uh, an admission of belief or, or, or a claim or any of those things. OK, I'm just saying that uh, there's there's something to examine here that I think somebody watching this video might want to further consider. Uh, why a specific bat species matters is this, uh, an, an, an emergent understanding, and it, it may not be the prevailing understanding at this point, an emergent understanding of what was happening in the viral lab in Wuhan was that uh, either, either as a tactical tool or simply as a strategic tool, uh, there was uh, an effort to, to, to find a mechanism to weaponize bat species. Um, and uh, if you weaponize a specific bat species, the idea is you, you can then reintroduce that infected bat species to its region of origin and in, in a reasonably covert way, uh, drop a viral bomb on that region and depopulate that region um, with, without it being entirely clear uh, what happened. It, with plausible deniability provided that your emails don't get leaked. Okay, uh, so why bats? Well, why there, there are various advantages to weaponizing a bat. Uh, one is it flies. So uh, within the region where it goes, it goes everywhere, <laughs> potentially everywhere. Uh, so it, they're, they're very mobile. And I mentioned region. Another advantage is bats have specific regions. They don't tend to venture very far outside of what's shown on, on a map of where the bat species lives. Third advantage is uh, most bats, with exception of marsupial bats, for example, um, are com compared to other flying animals, at least, are physiologically similar to humans. That is to say, they're, they're mammals, and so they have mammalian viruses. Um, so to to find a virus that you can either directly use or slightly modify uh, in order to infect a bat species and reintroduce the bat species to its region of origin allows you, again, to uh, to to uh, and, and infect the human population there. I, I don't want to explain it too much. I, I, that's that's the reason why they would be looking at bats as, as a possible depopulation tool. Okay, so if they if they were using a specific bat or if they're focusing on a specific bat in the lab, uh, that would be some indication of what region they were uh, figuring out how to depopulate. Now, if they had a bunch of different bat species. That would be great. It might not mean that they're looking at depopulating everything. It might mean that they want to make sure that uh, the specific virus only infects humans and infects one specific species of bat. That would be really convenient. I don't know. Again, I don't know what's going on. I'm just trying to explain possible things that might have been happening inside that lab. Um, so what, what bat species would be most useful uh, for governments of China and I won't say United States government, I'll say American interests to, to weaponize. Uh, looking at uh, various maps of bat populations a lot, um, my, my money at this point, and again, it's just kind of a guess, it's speculation, would be Schneider's leaf nose bat. So if we, if we later find out that was the focus of the research, that would be, that would tend to support uh, my related hypothesis that the goal of the research could have been could have been uh, to to depopulate uh, India without without much impacting uh, surrounding regions. So Schneider's leaf nose bat is all over the southern half of India. Uh, there's one tiny dot in the north, but the uh, the the geographic threat to China is comparatively small, and the geographic threat to India is huge, and geographic threat to surrounding nations is almost nothing. Uh, 
provided that the bat stays in its place and the virus <laughs> uh, is de somehow dependent on the bat for transmission. And is that a mistake that they could make? Well, look at the other mistakes they've made. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Schneider's Leaf knows bat. Look at a map. That's, that's where it lives. Southern half of India. Why, why would someone want to have a plan to depopulate uh, India? Uh, well, India is, is quickly emerging as a global competitor in various ways to the United States, and India is more than quickly emerging uh, in various ways as a regional competitor to China. Uh, American interests and Chinese interests, if they have one thing in common, it would seem to be uh, that they need to have at least a contingency plan to, to take India down a notch if India gets too powerful too quickly. How do I feel about this? Well, I don't. I don't know the. I don't know the long-term repercussions of, of doing or not doing something about India emerging as a superpower. But I, my, my my opinion is that whatever the downside is of leaving India to its own devices, uh, that is probably not as bad as the scenario of weaponizing a bat and trying to use it to depopulate India. Um, for, for various reasons. One, there's the obvious moral wrongness, the abundant moral wrongness of, of uh, using depopulation, uh, viral de depopulation as, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as a political tool or as a military tool. Uh, the, other, the other problem, obviously, is uh, what if the virus uh, isn't dependent on that bat at some point and the virus just starts going everywhere on its own because now it affects humans? Um, did they think of that? Maybe. Uh, maybe not. Is it, is it possible that they were stupid enough not to have thought of that? Well, there's a, there's a bunch of other things that people don't seem to have thought of that, that uh, I, I can't talk about them on YouTube or my, my videos will get taken down. Uh, but I can just point to Anthony Fauci is obviously an extremely intelligent person. Uh, but if you, you look at his explanations of things from the start of this process to where we are now, and look at the inconsistency with which he explains things. Uh, it's a sign that even a person of his uh, obvious intelligence is capable of making very, very badly calculated decisions. And yeah, this could this could just be one more of those bad decisions that that a, a group of people not communicating well with each other could easily make. 